Hello everyone, welcome to my next lesson in basic concepts of practical coastal navigation. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These navigation videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can take the place of accredited courses from qualified instructors and developing your own navigation skills over time. You are responsible for choosing destinations and cruising areas that are within your own level of experience and ability. Any charts you may see in this video are not for navigation purposes. They may be out of date and they are for explanation purposes only. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. In the last lesson, I covered how locations on the surface of the Earth are identified by the intersection of lines of latitude and longitude. In this lesson, I'll cover directions. A direction is the direction you're facing when you're standing on the surface of the Earth, or it's the direction you're moving regardless of where you're facing, or it's the direction you're planning to move to get from one location to another. And since a direction can rotate through a complete circle, Directions are defined as angles from 0 to 360 degrees. But what can we use to define a direction system on the surface of the Earth? Are you thinking lines of latitude and longitude? Me too. Wherever you are on the Earth, if you're facing the North Pole, that direction is north, of course. North points towards the North Pole along the lines of longitude. So if you're located somewhere on the surface of the Earth like this, and you're facing north, then if you turn 90 degrees to your right, then you're facing east, directly along a line of latitude. So if we arbitrarily set north as being the reference line of 0 degrees, then east is 90 degrees. So if someone says they're facing 90 degrees, it means they're facing due east along a line of latitude. Then continue your turn to the right, another 90 degrees, and this is 180 degrees, which is due south along the same line of longitude. Keep going another 90 degrees, and you're facing west, which is 270 degrees along the same line of latitude as the one you were facing east on. Complete the turn, and you're facing north again, which is 0 degrees, because the count resets to 0 when you reach 360. Now, these degrees are for a circle on the surface of the Earth to define directions. They're not the same as the degrees of lines of latitude and longitude. Those angles are different. They are defined from the center of the Earth. Degrees that define directions point horizontally, so don't confuse the two. Let's look at what this looks like on a nautical chart. I've taken all chart diagrams from OpenCPN on my laptop. Here we have the intersection of a line of latitude and longitude in Georgia Strait. Specifically, this is 123 degrees 30 minutes west longitude and 49 degrees north latitude. So this arrow is pointing directly north and it is 0 degrees true. Then east is 90 degrees true, south is 180 degrees true, and west is 270 degrees true. We call these directions true because they are defined relative to 0 degrees, which is north and points to the true north pole. So, that's it. That's how directions are defined. Directions are a 360 degree circle lined up with true north. And if there was such a thing as a small device that you could hold in your hand that naturally lined up with the rotation of the Earth so that we could use it to find true north and measure all other directions from there, we'd use it. But unfortunately, there is no such device. Ah, but luckily, the Earth has a magnetic field that lines up roughly north-south and a compass with a magnetized needle will line up with that magnetic field. A compass points to magnetic north, not to true north. But then, why don't we just use magnetic north on all our charts, if that's the only thing we can easily measure without referencing the stars? There are two reasons. First, the direction of the Earth's magnetic field 
varies depending upon where you're located on the Earth. So you can't draw charts that consistently show the same directions everywhere. And secondly, the Earth's magnetic field slowly shifts around from year to year. When you convert bearings from degrees true to degrees magnetic, you need to make a correction for the number of years it's been since your chart was published. So you need to do all your route planning on charts in degrees true, and then as a last step, go back and convert all the bearings to degrees magnetic. Then there's another step to convert those to degrees compass, but I'll discuss that later. So first, let's look at what information we can find on a chart that shows us where magnetic north is and how it shifts around. Here is a compass rose on a chart that shows true directions and magnetic directions for this region. It has two circles with the degrees marked off from 0 to 360. On the outer circle, 0 degrees lines up with the lines of longitude and points to the true north pole. The outer circle is degrees true. The inner circle in this region is displaced to the east by 20 degrees. The inner circle points to magnetic north. If you held a compass in your hand like this one at this location in the year this chart was published, this is where your north needle would point. The Earth's magnetic field approximately lines up with the north-south pole, but not exactly. The difference between true north and magnetic north is called the magnetic variation. In this case, the magnetic variation is 20 degrees to the east of north. The variation is different in different regions, and in eastern Canada it can even point to the west of north, like this. This is called the west variation. The second thing we can notice from this compass rose is the information contained in these brackets. This says the year this variation was measured in this region was 1997, but it's shifting to the west each year by six minutes per year. In other locations, it could be shifting to the east. You have to check the compass rows close to where you're planning your trip to get the correct information. I'm using the free navigation software OpenCPN to easily generate these images, but unfortunately, I only have outdated digital charts for it. You should be using more up-to-date charts, of course, but the concepts are exactly the same. So, let's say you're planning a trip in the year 2007. This chart was published in 1997, so it's 10 years later, and the magnetic variation has been shifting by 6 minutes per year to the west. So, in 10 years, the magnetic variation has shifted by 60 minutes, or 1 degree back to the west. So the magnetic variation in this location, corrected to 2007, is 19 degrees east. But magnetic variations can also shift towards the east. You need to carefully read the compass rows to determine which direction, east or west, the magnetic variation is moving, and apply the appropriate correction. Okay, so now we know that magnetic north can vary to the east or west of true north. And we also know that whatever the variation is in the year the chart was published, it can be shifting to the east or west by a small amount each year. So we have to apply a yearly correction to determine what the variation is in our current year. So why are we doing all this? It's so we can plan our trips on our charts in degrees true, then convert all bearings to degrees magnetic, so that we can use our ship's compass to follow those magnetic bearings. But now let's look at how to convert degrees true to degrees magnetic. Let's look at an arbitrary compass rose with a magnetic variation of 20 degrees east. For this explanation, we'll forget about making a correction to the current year. This is just an explanation of how to convert degrees true to degrees magnetic. Here's a line that points to 20 degrees true. As you can see, it's also 0 degrees magnetic. So to convert 20 degrees true and get 0 degrees magnetic, clearly you have to subtract an easterly variation. 20 degrees true minus 20 equals 0 degrees magnetic. But what about a westerly variation? Here is a compass rose that shows a magnetic variation of 19 degrees west. Again, we're only trying to understand how to convert degrees true to degrees magnetic, so we won't worry about correcting this to the current year. If we draw the same line of 20 degrees true here and zoom in, you can see it's 39 degrees magnetic. 
So to convert degrees true to degrees magnetic, you need to add a westerly variation. So we do our trip planning in degrees true. Then we use the closest compass rows to determine the magnetic variation in each area of our trip. Then we correct the magnetic variation for the current year by applying the annual change. Then we convert degrees true to degrees magnetic by subtracting an easterly variation or adding a westerly variation. Now let's look at a practical example to walk through these steps. Let's say you're planning to travel from the English Bay Bellboy to the entrance of Silva Bay on Gabriola Island. And the current year of your trip is the year 2007. Here's the chart for our straight crossing. We can draw a line on the chart from the English Bay Bellboy to the entrance of Silva Bay for our straight crossing. We then use a parallel ruler to walk the line over to the compass rows and find out it's 243 degrees true. You can practice using different types of rulers to do this. Now, don't use my numbers here. You've got to do your own chart work. This is an example only. In 1997, the magnetic variation was 20 degrees east, and it's moving to the west by 6 minutes per year. So 10 years later, in 2007, the magnetic variation this location has shifted by 60 minutes, or 1 degree, back to the west. So the magnetic variation in the year of your trip, 2007, is 19 degrees east. We subtract an easterly variation, so this line of 243 degrees true minus 19 degrees east is 224 degrees magnetic. We can head out to the bellboy, turn our boat to 224 degrees magnetic using our ship's compass, and head off. You may also wish to take into account winds and currents, but here we're just looking at how to determine a compass course for your trip. Okay, but we're not finished. There's one more wrinkle to take into account when it comes to using your ship's compass, and that is that there can be external influences on your compass that can interfere with where it points. It may not point exactly to the correct magnetic bearings. The difference between degrees true and degrees magnetic is the magnetic variation. The difference between degrees magnetic and degrees compass is called the compass deviation. And the deviation can change as you rotate your boat through 360 degrees. Finding out how the compass direction deviates from the magnetic direction is called turning your compass. You turn your boat through 360 degrees and measure how it differs from the magnetic direction every 30 degrees or so. You can make up a table like this that shows all the deviations for each direction. And when converting from magnetic to compass, you also subtract easterly deviations. So let's say this is the table for our ship's compass. Our magnetic bearing from the English Bay Bellboy to the entrance to Silva Bay was 224 degrees magnetic. We can look at this table and see the deviation at 210 is 2 degrees west, and at 240 it's 6 degrees west. Our magnetic course of 224 is about halfway between, so we can estimate the deviation is halfway, or about 4 degrees west. So 224 degrees magnetic plus 4 degrees west deviation is 228 degrees compass. We're adding west in this case, because we subtract east. So we can write that down on our chart. Each compass will have a different deviation table, so make sure you use the right table for the right compass. You could also use some special notation, like P for a port compass, or S for starboard, perhaps, if you have two ship's compasses. But before we end this lesson, there are two memory aids to help you remember whether to add or subtract easterly or westerly variations and deviations. They're cute and reliable. Personally, I don't use them. I look at a compass rose and figure it out directly. But many people like to use them, so I'll quickly describe them here. If you wish to convert degrees true to degrees magnetic, you apply the magnetic variation. Then, to convert degrees magnetic to degrees compass, you apply a deviation. And for both, you subtract easterly variations and deviations, which of course implies you have to add westerly variations. The memory aid for this is, True virgins make dull company Saturday evening. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't make this up. Sometimes, such as when you're taking a fix to mark on a chart, 
you may need to go in the other direction. So to go from degrees compass to magnetic, apply the deviation in reverse. Then to go from degrees magnetic to degrees true, apply the variation in reverse. So in this case, you need to add easterly differences. So the memory aid for this is, can dead men vote twice at Easter? Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. But watch it again as many times as you like, as I covered a lot in this lesson.